of all the new McCall sewing patterns that I picked up. You know the one that kind of wraps in the back and then it ties in the front? Oh, I could not wait to make that one. I am about to start working on McCall's 8286 and I am planning to make view C. When I first picked up this pattern, I thought view B and C were different lengths, but they are actually the same length. So I wanted view C to be longer. So what I decided to do was to lengthen the pattern by four and a half inches. And there is a curved hem. So just so I wouldn't disturb this curve, I decided to cut the pattern right here at the line where it says cut for view A. I just cut there and added four and a half inches to the pattern. So I did the same thing on the back. This is the back. I did it on the front piece and then I had to also remember to do it on this front band and the front band is going to be right down the middle where you put buttons on. This is the fabric that I am using. I did cut out all of the pieces. There are back darts. There are front darts in the bust area. This pattern is rated as average. I'm not sure what kind of fabric this is. It reminds me of maybe a cotton linen blend, but I really like the stripes because that's how it is on the pattern envelope and I thought that look was really nice. Steps number four and five want you to do French seams. So after you sew the overlay to the front of the top, then you're going to have a very narrow seam here because you are to sew this at three eighths of an inch and then you are supposed to trim your seam down and trim it down to one eighth of an inch. And then what you do in order to create the French seam is you turn the two pieces to the right side, something like this. And then I pressed mine so that everything can be nice and flat. And then what you'll do is you're going to sew really close to this seam that you just created all the way from the top down and that is going to enclose this seam here and it will look something like this when you're done so that way the outside will be nice and neat and the inside will be finished so I did the one side and now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing for this side I just need to press this and then go ahead and sew it down so that I can create the French seam on this side. Step number six has you finish the overlay with narrow hem. So what I did is I used this wash away tape, which I really, really love. It's so handy. And I just took it and placed it on the edge and it's sticky. So I'm going to stick it all the way down, which is what I did on the other side. And then what you do is you peel it. And then when you peel it, it's sticky and I fold it in once and then I press it all the way down and then I roll it in again and then I stitch it the second time. And then that's how I got this look here. I am on step number seven and here is the overlay and this is the front piece and it has the darts and then this is the overlay with the narrow hem and then you take your overlay piece and you are going to attach it wrong side to right side and make it like one big piece together. So you'll take this and pin it down, which I did on the opposite side. And then there are dots. There's a dot here. And then there's a dot on the other side. There's a dot there. And you're going to baste from dot to dot. 
So you'll base from here, go up around, and finish on this side. And then this will be all attached as one piece. So here's the dress loosely pinned to the dress form. So you can see how it's coming out so far. The darts in the front are actually hidden. They are under this little front overlay. And then in the back you have darts also. And they are right here, one here and one over here. And now I will go ahead and start working on the sleeves so that I can get the sleeves in. I will be working on the sleeves next and they will have pleats and then these pleats will go into a cuff. I have just finished putting on the sleeves with the cuff on the end and then there is, where is it? There's a button hole here and I will add the buttons later of course. And then next I will be working on the hem. So the hem is curved. Right now I just pinned the facings onto the hem and then I will stitch these on to the bottom and then go around and do some under stitching and then after the hem is complete then it'll be time to work on the front band where the buttons will be applied later. After you sew the facing onto the hem you flip it up under stitch and then this is how it is looking so far. And then I need to press this and stitch around the edges to secure it in place. I prepped the front band by turning in the edge here, interfaced it, trimmed this little seam down to 3 8 of an inch, and then you take it and you line it to the top of the front and you go ahead and stitch it down. Now you do have your overlay right here, so you wanna make sure you just pull your overlay out of the way, and that way you won't stitch on top of it, but then you pin everything down over it all the way to the end, and I did it on this side. So now I just need to go ahead and stitch this down, and there is a little extra on mine. I did extend this, so I may have extended it too much. The directions tell you to stitch across the bottom, so that will go ahead and take care of this overage, but I'm glad it's not too short. I'd much rather it be too long than too short. So once this is done, it should look something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this down, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. The neckband is now sewn on. I press the seam allowance up that way. Now you're supposed to take the band and fold it in half. And then you should have a dot. So there's a dot there. I marked the right side and the wrong side. So this is the same dot. I'm just gonna fold it over like that and then you're supposed to sew the neck edge and pivot at the dot so you will sew from the top neck edge here down to the dot and then go over okay so this is how everything looks after you sew from the neck edge over and then i trim the seam so there was a seam allowance here and here and i just trimmed that off and then you should be able to flip this to the other side, get a nice little point, fold this back so that your seam allowance is covered by this folded edge here. And you will fold this in half and press it down. And then your collar will attach to this edge here. So this will be where your collar will go. And then once you get to the bottom, I will fold this over to the right side and then I will sew across the bottom and then flip it out similar to the way that I flipped this part out and then I should have a finished edge similar to this. What I'm doing now is just folding over the band and I'm covering up the seam allowance here 
So the band is to be folded in half and then you pin it down and then you will press it. And then after you press it, you will edge stitch the band down to the front of the dress. And this is all to get prepared to put on the buttons and put in the button holes. I've enjoyed making this dress and I am almost done. I have to put on the collar and then after that I'll do buttons, do the buttonholes and then the dress will be finished. For the buttons I just decided to go with these wooden buttons that I purchased from Joanne Fabrics. The pattern calls for 14 half inch buttons and I don't know if I'm going to put the button at the very very top of the dress. I may skip that button but I'll see when I get to that point. Here is the collar. It has a little bit of understitching around the top and now I am going to take the collar and attach it to the dress right sides together. So I will go around pin this on, sew it down, and then the collar will flip up like this and it will be all attached. I ended up not adding the very first button. I just went down to the very next button and then because I lengthened the dress, I just added an extra button to the bottom. Mm -hmm. 